as you see by the title, we're going to be talking about money. It seems like we be straying away from politics, finances, race, religion, sexuality, childhood trauma. It's stuff that you need to talk about. We need to talk about. Money seems like, well, that ain't none of my business. Well, when you're planning on marrying somebody or even dating them, it is your business. Certain questions we should be asking, it seems like we'd be like, oh, I don't really know if I want to ask that. No, I need to know your credit score. Because if y'all thinking about getting things joint together, you got to know these things. And the worst thing is when you go into a marriage, surprised. Surprised? Well, you should know or ask what the person's credit score is. Are you a big spender? You be balling, you be spinning here, here, here. Are you tight? You frugal? Do you have a budget? Do you have a budget that you live by or that you go by? Uh, Do you save your money? Are you the type to be like, I don't believe in credit. If I ain't got the money, I ain't going to spend it. Or are, do you believe in credit? Do you have a lot of debt? Do you owe child support? It's a lot. And I'm not just talking about men. Women, you owe child support? I feel like, do, can women owe child support? Yes, they can. Well, I'm sorry, y'all. I know. I shouldn't be eating because my mama be cooking. But I just wanted something a little different. You know, I had to treat myself. I've been a good girl lately. But this is stuff that needs to be talked about. You need to know and make sure you are on the same page. Back in 2018, I believe, don't quote me, that Ameritrade stated that Gen Xers, like 40, 49, 40%, 30, between 30 and 40% of married couples divorced because of finances. And baby boomers, it was 29%. This could be all eliminated if we just be honest. You need to know their financial past, present, and future. Do you got some old stuff that's haunting you that's going to come up? And if I marry you, it's going to be my responsibility. Do you got a lot going on where I'm going to have to be fitting the bill? There's stuff we need to talk about. I'm going to tell y'all a, a couple little stories that I have with dating and money. Okay? And I'm going to make up their names. And I'm going to make up the places because... I ain't trying to offend nobody. This was so long ago, back when I was in a dating game. But this dude asked me to go out, right? So I'm like, okay, you know, be going out or whatever. So we go, and I didn't really order much, but it's because I had already ate. But normally, if you know me, I'm ordering everything. I want this. Oh, I can get this to go. I'm going to take this. But I was chill. So I got like a little appetizer. And then he got the same thing I got, a little appetizer. So the bill comes. The bill's $21 and some change. Easy. Cool, right? Not even expensive. Dang, the girl's cheap. And he pulls out a $20 bill. <laughs> you asked me to come out. I didn't ask you to come out. You asked me to come out. All right. So he looking at me. And I'm looking at him. I'm like, what are we going to do? So luckily for him, his cousin was sitting at the bar. So he's like, I'm going to just ask my cousin. Oh, man, I thought I had more. Blah, blah, blah. So he asked his cousin, but I'm like, it's fine. It's good. I'll take care of it. You know, because I, I was young. So at the same time, I'm trying to prove to a guy, I don't need you for your money. I got my own money. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I ain't say it. But I'm in my head, I'm like, I'm trying to prove I ain't here. You know. So I pay for it. Because it, you can't just pay $21 and some change. The, you, you can't pay the exact amount. You're at a restaurant. Okay? You got to give a tip. Okay? You know, people be looking at us brothers and sisters and be like, Ugh. They ain't going to tip. I'm going to tip. So that kind of threw me off. But I'm like, maybe he was rushing. Maybe he left his money in his other pants. I don't know. I don't have a problem with paying. But the rule of thumb that I was taught, that whoever asks whoever to go out, that's who's supposed to pay. So if I asked him to go out, I should be paying or should be expected. But if he asked me to go out, he should be paying. Okay? So maybe like... A week or so later, this man asked me, oh, can I borrow $20? I got to give it to so-and-so to give them gas money. Now, we're just dating, okay? You asking me for money, I, didn't, I don't ask you for anything. And it's not like you need a money for yourself. You owe somebody money. I'm not here to pay your personal obligations, okay? So, I'm just like, okay, so first it's, the restaurant date and then you asking me to give you money for somebody you owe gas to i'm like okay maybe he's just down bad but i'm starting to pick up on these cues because when i'm thinking about a partner long term i'm trying to figure out do i got to take care of you and me or can you take care of me 
Or am I going, you going to be out here betting and, and, and gambling and stuff like that? And I'm going to have to pay all your debts? I just don't know. But at the time, you know, I'm young. So I'm not asking the questions that need to be asked. I feel like we'd be straying away from money, but we really need to talk about money because what you don't want to happen is you end up marrying a person and surprise, surprise, my little eye. And if you can't afford it prior to the marriage, you're not going to be able to afford it after the marriage. Uh. So before I talk more and I get into my ideas, you know what? No, let me tell you one more little quick story. I got so many stories. Let me tell you one more little quick story. This dude, right? Hold on, can I take a bite? I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. This dude asked me to go out, right? I'm so sorry. I know some people don't like hearing chewing and chomping and stuff like that, but it was only right. Okay, maybe I'll drink a little. But anyway, this dude asked me to go out. I'm like, okay, he's like, you know, what's your favorite restaurant? I'm like, oh, I like Fridays. And he's like, okay. Well, bet, you know, you busy Saturday? And I'm like, no, I'm not busy. We can go out. And he was like, okay, um, you can drive. I mean, I'll drive and you pay. You asked me to go out. Now, as I told y'all, you know, some time ago, the rule of thumb is whoever asks who out, that's who pay. You asked me. How are you going to dictate my money and where it go? When I tell y'all I was turned off, I was done. I was done. Because my thing is, it's absolutely nothing wrong if you want to be frugal or you ain't really got money like that. But be creative, okay? You could be like, you know, we can just go to Chick-fil-A, McDonald's. I don't eat McDonald's, but we can go to Chick-fil-A, we can go to Popeye's, you know. I don't really got it like that, but I do want to go out with you and I don't want too much time to go by. Um, if you don't mind, you pay for your stuff. We can go Dutch because we're not even in a relationship at this point. And then maybe we can go to the park and like sit out and eat. That would have been cool. But no, you over here telling me what I need to pay for. Uh-uh. I ain't like that. But before I get super into stuff that we need to discuss and questions we need to ask, we are going to watch this quick clip from Ready to Love. So what's your thought on finances? Uh, I think that's a conversation that, you know, one would have. I think, uh, you know, we split the mortgage. I would take water, cable, internet. Maybe she handles the car insurance. So it's about splitting everything. The, you know, being partners with it. Let's see here. I'm not intimidated by a strong woman. I mean, I know she make more than me, because you know, ain't no you money in radio. She ain't no money in radio. You know, I do this, I do this for the love. You, you know what I'm know saying? That. And so um, I have no problem with falling back and letting her Sean, I know my place. I've had some unfortunate situations happen as far as not having successful pregnancies. And I don't want to carry again and have to be concerned with finances. So that literally is something that I have to think about when I'm dating. But as far as when you see yourself as a husband, what are the things you look forward to giving and being to your wife or to the household? My role is to fill in and step up where you see the gaps. So you, know? you think the leader fills in the gaps or the leader makes it done and the woman comes in to help fill in the gaps? Well, I, well, I thought it was a partnership because that's the type of man I am. I mean, it's been like that throughout my entire life, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's 2020. Some women may want to contribute instead of having the man, you know, do it all because they are so empowered. But I could definitely tell that the tide had changed. Like, the, the, the energy just didn't feel the same. Man. Where's the lettuce? So the age-old question is, should the man pay all the bills? Now, this topic has been discussed all over YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Everybody talks about it. So I'm not going to touch super much on it but i just want to say it all depends on what you both want i feel like you should marry someone that you are financially compatible with so there are questions and things that need to be discussed so for me it's either you have more of a traditional mindset where the man pays 100 percent of the bills or you're more modern day where the woman is able to work she can bring in the money too y'all can do a 50 50 70 30 60 40 it depends on what your 
both of your net income is. So, or is it gross? Is it gross? Gross. Net. I know what I'm talking about. It's net. So, if you want to talk about the money that you're bringing after all the taxes, after Uncle Sam get what he need to get. And so, from there, you can kind of decide, all right, you know, she might make a little more, he makes a little more, and this is how we're going to distribute it. Cool. Y'all can be on the same page, same page, same team. But me, you know, if you want to know me personally, I would like for the guy to pay 100% of the bills. But I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to tell you what my contribution would be. So, as y'all know, I want to be a mommy, and I want to homeschool my children i find it very important to invest in their education so in order for me to do that i really need to be present and i really need to be hands-on so preferably for a period of time no that was not playing so for a period of time i would like to not be working and i want my husband to be able to pay 100 percent of the bills we have to make sure we live within our means so i'm not asking for a five bedroom home and a fancy car and all that stuff if we gotta live in a two bedroom apartment by all means and that's what we gotta do to make sure that i'm home and we can afford it so i can take care of our children then i'm cool so i do feel like i would like him for a period of time to take over so i can really instill the values and things that i need into our children but after that when i decide that it's okay for them to go back to school or you know they're older or whatever and i choose to work and we discuss it then yes i would work i don't mind splitting the bills 70 30 60 40 whatever um but also it would be nice if we already had that in place and then i decided you know i'm gonna put in put up money for the toiletries or i'm gonna do the grocery shopping so the toilet paper paper towels food you name it like that type of stuff i'm gonna take care of it and the big bills you're gonna take care of it but it it just depends you know things change in your relationship god forbid the guy get laid off girl in between jobs and stuff like that that's why we gotta have these discussions to know we're on the same page my philosophy with money is save for emergencies but you can't die with the money so make sure you treat yourself so like I said, going back, God forbid, he loses his job. We already got money in the bank. We good. Six months, saved up three months, whatever it is that we plan for. But while you are in the dating phase, it is very important to have discussions. You got to be real. You got to be open. You got to be honest. Because what you don't want to do is tie the night and they be like, surprise. Don't nobody want no surprise. You want to know what you're getting into. I need to know, what is your credit score? We decide that we want to get a house together or a car together and my interest rate ends up skyrocketing because your credit score is down here then we got a problem okay so yeah talk about your credit score do you have any debt how much debt do you got do you believe in credit some people be like you know what if we ain't got it we ain't gonna get it and some people feel like no i have a healthy relationship with credit or maybe it's an unhealthy relationship with credit you need to know how much money do you owe how much money do you bring in what is your net income? What's your relationship with money? Are you a big spender? Are you a budgeter? Do you save? Are you frugal? Because thinking back to those dates, I'm like, maybe they was frugal with their money. They wanted to spend my money. Maybe they had a big account at home and maybe that's why they able to spend so much or, or, or forgive me, save so much because they take little gullible people like me and make me pay for stuff. But I don't know. That could just be me talking. Mm, 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 mm. You need to know your partner's financial past, financial present, and financial future. I need to know what your goals are. Do you can plan to continue to have consistent income? Are you in so much debt and you file bankruptcy and we can't get certain things? Are you a person that wants to rent or own? It's so many questions that need to be had and we need to not stray away from it and feel like you, I don't want to get into their business. Get into their business. Get into their business because you don't want to be surprised at the marriage. And one thing I'm going to say, I always say, if I ever get married, God willing, I do not plan to get a divorce. When you get married to your financially fit person, meaning y'all agree on, you know, y'all fit financially, do not divorce if it's in your power to do so. Do right by each other because divorce can be very expensive. The quickest way to a financial downfall is divorce. I'm just saying. At your best with the divorce, y'all can split it 50-50 or you take what you had and they take what they have. Smooth transition. At worst, lawyer fees, 
alimony, child support. Then you got to up and leave. So now you got moving expenses you got to take care of. I'm just saying, you got to be careful. Once you are married, keep a open and honest discussion about your finances. Don't be hiding that you are struggling because your partner can come and help out. Y'all need to revisit the budget. Keep checking in with your pay and what you're getting. Make sure y'all on the same page so y'all stay afloat. Because what I don't want to happen is to see y'all fail and argue over finances. Because you want to know what? We already talked about it before we got married. We were open and honest. So now, all y'all doing is just keeping up with each other. Another financial topic that needs to be discussed is do you plan to have children? Children are very, very expensive. Don't ask me how much. I calculated some time. I feel like it could be a half a million dollars at this point, and I'm being 100% honest. Things and things are getting more and more expensive over time. And just know, when you have children, you cannot be selfish. You can't be selfish. Don't be over here. I know how some of the mamas be dressed up, $200 wig, and your child is looking like, ooh, a mess. We're not going to do that. You actually end up spending way more money on your child than you do yourself. So let's think about certain things that you got to pay for. Food, clothes, education, extracurricular, entertainment if they want to go out. You know, you want to give them a little allowance. Then on top of that, you and your little two-seater, now you got to get the minivan. So now you got to get a bigger car. Then it's like you was in your little one-bedroom apartment. Now you got to get a two-bedroom. Or oh, dang, it's time for a house with a backyard. It's like, you know, my little utility bill was $50 and now you got to use more water because you got to give them a bath too then you you know they cry so you know how some of y'all parents be oh I'm just gonna put on the tv and they they, they they like the colors then your electric bill up high all your bills are going to go up because you're adding another person another expense pampers diapers wipes then we didn't even talk about college I said education because you know buying school supplies and you know whatever's needed for the field trips and stuff like that but once they get to college I pray that your child get a scholarship and, you, and make sure you tell them, get those good grades so these people are paying for your school because you don't want to be stuck with that bill. Child, that thing is like paying for a house or two. I'm telling you, it is bad and just way over your head. We have to make sure we do not shy away from the money conversation. Have those conversations. And if you're scared... Show your significant other this video and maybe, just maybe, it'll spark a conversation.